Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are talking about BuildBox. Now, what is BuildBox? Well, it is one of the easiest to use 3D game engines out there. I was super interested in this project until something happened. We'll get to that something in just a little bit. But BuildBox is just occupies a very interesting niche because it is probably the most accessible 3D game engine out there. So, for example, here you can see from the templates, I'm going to go ahead and create something from a template. And this is going to set up everything we need to create the simple game. Now, the big thing behind BuildBox is they were really focusing on the no code approach to game development and they did manage to make something that is really uh, polished easy to use and again does not require coding although there are abilities to get into the code behind the scenes if you need to so here is the world builder for this sample template a uh, really simple game basically you're running around looking for keys and opening doors uh, that's kind of the extent of it uh, it is just to showcase what this is capable of we're running in uh, an iphone 11 emulator style so if you're wondering about the form factor so we got the on-screen controller we got a 3d character in the world you see we've got physics i got that open and i think now i need to come over by this door and it will open up that door that's really the extent of the game nothing too too magical but you can see how um simple it is to actually create a game in build box you basically you populate the world with stuff so for example i have objects over here i could obviously bring in my own stuff or get more from their asset store but if i wanted to populate something into the world i literally just drop it into the world we have world placement over here um when it brought it in let me see if I can actually bring that back up. Uh, you've got a number of properties you can set on it, such as physics and settings and so on. But you may be wondering, okay, well, how does the coding or the logic work here? Well, they use something called mind maps and they're available over here. So you can see this is a very top level flow of the game world. So here, your starting condition starts right here. So this is basically your entry point. Uh, it breaks into a UI screen. You could show an ad or not at this point in time, play some music, pretty simple. And then that clicks into the 3D world. Uh, you've got th global settings such as the gravity in your world, grid size, time, steps, and so on. And then the majority of your logic comes down into the components. So down here, you've got a variety of different options. So if I needed to have four-way swiping, drop four-way swip swiping in here, and then I could pull in pins to what I want to do. So as a completely contrived example, I could do a uh, camera shake. So bang, I swipe up, the camera shakes. And then we could string that into something else. And that is your programming. Again, every one of these nodes has some options over here. So they really pioneered, again, the easy to use, polished. Again, these tools are they're super pretty, super nice. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to work with. And then again, the coding side of things is um, very, very simplified. There's other options there too. Like for example, uh, I could have actually dropped into uh, a uh, I guess it's this guy right here. I could have dropped into a script uh, as an option here. I think under advanced, uh, there's scripts options there that you could fire off like so, or you've got state machines for doing advanced logic that you could set up uh, various different states and as they control. So there is more complexity there, but you need to dig into it if you actually want it. So uh, that was the idea behind BuildBox. And again, it fits this very unique niche of being the easiest to use 3D game engine out there. Of course, to get that ease of use, you're definitely making some sacrifices. Well, what they've done is they've just announced uh, BuildBox 4. Now this is just in alpha format. So here we are at the BuildBox site, which by the way is buildbox.com. And what you'll notice here is they have this new video up. And let's just go ahead and watch it. Now you're gonna notice right away, AI first. Yes, this is an AI driven product, but honestly, it's a little bit less snake oily than all the other stuff we're seeing at GDC so far, because this is basically hooking AI language processing into their game engine and replacing the no code aspect of it with text prompts. So uh, they're gonna have a translation layer that then executes things inside of their engine. So this isn't like generative AI, or at least it doesn't appear to be. This is more using AI to understand exactly what your developers want. And if you're looking for kind of a, making a game engine that is accessible to many people as possible, this as an interface makes a ton of sense. Now, of course, it all comes down to the devil being in the detail. How well did they actually pull this off? Because if it's more frustrating to actually send these AI commands, if it doesn't understand the intent of what you want, it's going to be the most infuriating programming system ever. However, if they actually make it work like what they're illustrating here, there is a lot of potential here. One of the most exciting things I saw with AI was very early on uh, when one of the Unity developers integrated ChatGPT into the Unity game engine to drive Unity. That is where I saw the future of these tools in a way that game and engine developers would actually like to work with them. And this is taking that approach to a different angle and making it aimed at um, 
you know, more of the beginner market for making 3D game development accessible. And that's always been BuildBox's shtick. And it'd be interesting to see if this AI approach is the right way to go. Well, this one, I can actually kind of see the use here. So I think that this is more intuitive than their no-code approach for, uh, like prospective 3D game developers to jump into. So right now it is just a wish list sign up to get access to the alpha. Uh, the alpha is supposedly exists, so you just basically have to sign on for it. It's for Windows and Mac OS. Uh, so you can say what you have experience with already. And that's the extent of it. So you could join a wait, uh, a wait list to see it. So you gotta wait and see how this actually works. But this is one of the best uses of um, AI in game engines that I have seen yet. Again, devil is always in the detail and it'd be interesting to see how well this actually works. Also, before we move on too much, I said I was excited about BuildBox in the past, past tense. Why was that? Well, remember the Unity thing, the Unity runtime fee? That wasn't actually the dumbest move in game development history. That is actually pretty staggering. There is a company that did much, much worse. And yeah, yeah, it was BuildBox. So way back in the day, BuildBox did a pricing change. So back in uh, May of 2021, uh, they announced that they were going to a 70-30 uh, split. So you would think to yourself, okay, well, that's the same as Steam. So um, BuildBox gets 30% of what you make. You get 70. Fine, it's a little steep, but whatever. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Those numbers are reversed. BuildBox got 70% of what you made. It was absolutely, utterly insane. So that was uh, that was the pricing that they announced back then. It was quite literally the worst pricing change in the history of products, as far as I can think of. If you can think of a worst example, do let me know. So they also follow the uh, the Unity runtime fee schedule of about a month later, uh, walking it back a little bit under a month. Uh, they, they changed the pricing, said it only applied to revenue generated, their new monetization system, uh, and you would still be able to make your money from in-app purchases, etc. They wouldn't try and take 70% of it. So uh, this was one of the most self-damaging things I have ever seen a company do, and it's really hard to trust them after the fact. Uh, but yeah, it'd be interested to see if they do pull off this AI stuff. It, it's interested me enough that when BuildBox 4 AI is actually available, I will give it a shot. Because again, this does really hit a niche that isn't normally hit. And that is easy, accessible 3D. There's not a lot of tools out there. So you've got full-blown game engines like Unity and Godot, but super, super easy stuff. Uh, you know, the, you've got things like Make Code and G Develop, et cetera, for the 2D side of things. But when it comes to 3D, there's not a lot of super easy to use 3D game engines. And uh, BuildBox kind of really hit that niche, but then they kind of shot themselves in the foot. But if they actually do manage to make this AI-driven approach work, it could be pretty interesting, although do keep in mind, this is a company that has a history of making really stupid mistakes. So let me know what you think of BuildBox 4, their use of AI in it. Are you excited by this? Again, if you're not the entry level 3D game developer, or you know, you're not looking for a code free alternative, this isn't for you. But if you're in that niche, I could definitely see uh, where this could ultimately appeal. All right, so let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.